let's talk about how to use some plugins and templates in Nina's advanced sequencer to help automate your backyard or remote observatory. I use Nina to automate my uh, backyard observatory and to facilitate the different parts of using Nina, I have developed um, several templates that I use for setting up in the advanced uh, sequencer. Now these templates uh, are based on templates that were put together by Chad over at Patriot Astro. Uh, there'll be a link to his channel down below, but I've taken those templates and I've modified them for my own use. So I thought I would go through them, show you what I have and the way that I use them. Uh, and I will make my templates available. There'll be a link uh, down below for that as well. Uh, feel free to download them and modify them for your own use as you see fit. So we're in Nina here. Um, I'll go through my equipment here real quick just to show you. Nothing's connected, but I'll show you what's available. I use a ASI 2600mm Pro camera. Uh, a ZWO filter wheel. I use a ZWO focuser. I use a Pegasus Astro, Astro Falcon rotator. Uh, my mount is an Iotron CEM70, of course PhD2, and then I use a Pegasus Astro um, Advanced Power Box version 3 uh, for all of the, as a USB hub and for all my power management and so forth. Uh, and it also, I, um, I use uh, a Deep Sky Dad flat panel. So that allows me uh, not only to use it as a cover uh, to cover my telescope during the day, but then I can use it to automate the, um, the ability to take flats. And then I also use the Pegasus Astro as um, a weather device. So that's how it gathers the temperature and so forth. Uh, and as you'll see, I don't really use temperature for focus or anything, but at least I'll show you what we have there. So if I jump over into the advanced sequencer, uh, I will show you a list of my templates and then we'll look at each one individually and, and talk about that. So. My templates here are, um, we've got the basic templates that, that come with the system. These are my base, my templates that I base everything on. And then I've got some templates down here uh, that I've just got pulled off separate, uh, just kind of keep them out of the way. And I'll go back to those from time to time and use them for different things, uh, depending on what's needed as, as time goes on. So um, basically for each sequence that I do, for each, anything that I set up, um, I have an advanced sequence start. So I'll pull that over into my start area and show you what I have here. Um, it tells it to wait till uh, nautical dusk. Uh, then I use uh, several things within uh, the, uh, I guess I should look at that first here. We'll look at some of the plugins that I use. Uh, I don't really use connector, but it's there. The filter offset calculator, um, I've talked about that in another video uh, where I talked about my filter wheel. Uh, this is wonderful. You set up, uh, you focus off of your luminance filter, you run through this calculator, and it calculates the offset from, if you're in perfect focus on luminance, and let's say you switch to HA, it knows how many focus steps there is between a focus of luminance and a focus of HA. So it automatically moves the focuser to that point. The benefit of that is, is you do not have to autofocus between each filter change. So it, it's a great time saver once it's set up. Um, I use ground station and I use that for uh, a pushover plugin, which sends messages to my smartphone uh, to tell me what's going on with my sequence throughout the night. Uh, I use Hocus Focus for my, uh, uh, 
for its focus evaluation. Um, and then I use sequence power-ups. Um, and sequence power-ups allows you to set up, uh, it gives you multiple, multiple add-ons to the instructions that are in the base of Nina that gives you more control and more programmability, if you will, into the sequence. So back into the uh, sequencer here. Um, so I can start this in the middle of the afternoon if I want, but it will wait until astronomical, uh, astronautical dusk. It then sends a message uh, via pushover telling me that it's opening the observatory roof and then I open the roof. Um, it does that, it waits until 60 minutes, one hour before nautical dust. So that gives it the ability to open the roof and allow the temperature within the observatory and the telescope to begin to equalize before I'm actually ready to start imaging. So at that point, it waits till 10 minutes before nautical dusk, and then tells me that it's starting uh, to prepare for imaging. So it sends me another message via pushover. It opens the flat panel cover, it unparks the scope, it moves the scope to home, to the home position, sets tracking, and begins to cool my camera. So if we take a quick look here, um, my scope is parked horizontally, as you can see. Um, that gives it the ability um, not to be interfered with by the roof and so forth. So when I start the sequence, uh, before I start cooling the camera and so forth, I move the camera back um, to the home position. Uh, and I just, it needs to do that to begin with, so we unpark and we move it there anyway. So that's a standard sequence start procedure, okay? So that happens at the beginning of every sequence that I'm going to do. Now, I'm running a monochrome camera as I showed you earlier. So the only main uh, templates that I've got here are for mono. So I have one for uh, just LRGB, if it's an LRGB ta target, and it's using offsets. Notice it just says LRGB offsets. I have one that says LRGB offsets and rotate. So the purpose of that is, is if I, when I set up the target, and I set the rotation angle that I want for in the framing, then when I take and, and start the sequence, I want it to slew to that position and then rotate the camera to that angle so that everything is lined up the way that I want. Uh, if I come back tomorrow night, I don't want it to automatically rotate via plate solving because it could possibly be a degree or so off. And for flats and so forth, I want that precise. So the first night, I will run with the rotate, and then after that, I will not use the rotate. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we get into the, in, to the nuts and bolts of each, process, of each uh, template. I have one for RGB stars, offset rotate. So if I'm doing a narrow band target, this sequence will just take uh, uh, 15 minutes of each uh, of RGB for uh, just very short 30 second exposures so that I have RGB stars that I can then incorporate into my narrow band image. If it is a narrow band uh, target, then I've got the same type thing, mono SHO offsets and mono SHO offsets and rotate. As I mentioned, I have a, a deep sky dab flat panel. So I also have the ability to take train flats uh, for either LRGB or SHO or both as needed. Uh, and again, uh, if you've uh, seen some of my other videos, I talk about how you can train uh, Nina uh, for flat exposures and the, the brightness level on the flat panel. It remembers that, so when you tell it to take a trained flat, it knows exactly what the exposure needs to be set to, what the flat panel needs to be set to for each filter. So it just goes through bang, 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 and takes flats for each filter for me for that particular target. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this, and let's set up a target just to kind of see the idea of how this would work. So let's say we're gonna do the Helix Nebula. So I would go over and we'll look up the Helix Nebula, which is NGC uh, 7293. Yep. 
7293. We'll find that. There's the Helix Nebula. Notice it's very low on the horizon and it's only there from sunset till about midnight is the only time that I can image that particular target. So we'll set that for the framing wizard. It will load up that image for me. And there we go. Now, an image like this, I don't really need to rotate anything. Everything looks good. Um, we'll just leave it squared up in the camera as such. So in this particular case, um, I'm, I would shoot this in RGB and then I would add H alpha. So since it's generally an RGB target, I will go over to the add target to sequence, sequencer, and notice here my templates show up and I'm going to do um, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this so we can see the rotate feature uh, LRGB uh, offsets rotate. So it's going to load in that target. Here's the target. And then here's the template. So we tell it we want to do a meridian flip, obviously. I have center after drift. It measures at every exposure. And if I get over three arc minutes out of uh, out of frame, it will recenter, reslew, recenter uh, the target for me. And then restore guiding. Um, what this does is if, uh, let's say, clouds pass through in the middle and I lose the guide star uh, and I lose guiding, it will constantly continue try to restore guiding. As soon as the clouds clear up, it will pick up and restore the guiding. Again, then if it has drifted a little bit, then it will recenter before it continues for me. Um, wait for nautical dust, dusk. Uh, wait until it's above the horizon. So if, um, if at nautical dusk it's not quite above horizon, uh, in this particular case it's going to be really close, it will wait until it knows it's above horizon. And I could set an offset there if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to wait until it's one degree above or whatever. But I've got my, my the horizon of my observatory is shown by this line by the custom horizon here, so it knows it's, it's clearing the trees and so forth. Then I would send a message to my phone telling me it's going to start the imaging sequence for this target and target name is a variable that it pulls from the target name up here, right here. Uh, it's going to switch to the luminous filter because that's the quickest and easiest to, to uh, for my uh, plate solving, slewing center and for my autofocus. So it's going to slew center and rotate. Uh, and then here we have a set variable. Now I'm going to go back up and I'm going to add my sequence start. So this would be my always for my sequence start. And we looked at this earlier, but right here I've got a constant variable container. And again, this is part of the Power Ups plugin. So I have two global variables, one called rotate one and rotate two, and they're initially set to an angle of zero. So down here, it's going to slew center and rotate based on what I had in the framing wizard. And then it's going to set the variable rotate one to the rotator position. And notice it says that's not defined yet because the rotator is not connected. But whatever the rotator is set at, it will set to this variable. The reason I do that is if I want to take automated flats uh, at the end of the sequence in the morning, let's say I have more than one target and they were rotated at different angles. Now I can rotate the camera back to this angle, take those flats, rotate to the second target's angle, set the, and then take those flats. So that's the purpose of having that variable in there. Okay. For my autofocus, I autofocus after an HFR increase of 10 uh, 10%. So as I said earlier, I don't usually use temperature. Um, some people like to use temperature and they autofocus after whatever degree or so in temperature change. Here, it just measures the stars. And if the stars start to get a little bloated, 
then it will stop and do an autofocus for me. It will loop until nautical dawn, or it'll loop until uh, it's no longer above the horizon. So in this case, it's not going to go all the way over here to nautical dawn. It's only going to go till about midnight or a little before because that's when it drops below the horizon and then it will stop imaging this target. Um, so yeah, so we, 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 we switched to the loom, we centered, we set the rotational value, we started guiding, I don't force the calibration, we ran autofocus, um, so at the beginning of, of the sequence it ran an autofocus, so we're starting out in focus, again, off of HFR, time, and then we start our exposures. So I'm taking three exposures at 120 seconds, their lights spin one by one, and it will pull the gain and offset from the camera settings. I'm doing the luminous filter, and notice I say dither every zero, so it's not gonna dither based on this command. Now, on this particular target, I actually want to, um, I want to take a, a three minute exposure, so I'm gonna change this to 180 seconds. And so, but we're not gonna do luminance. I'm gonna change this to HA. So I'm going to take 180 of HA, I'm going to take 180 of R, 180 of green, and then 180 of blue. And after it's taken three exposures of each filter, then it's going to dither. So it's dithering after it's taking three of each and then dither, and then it'll take three of each and then dither. So it's dithering every three exposures of each filter, okay? When it either gets to nautical dawn or it gets to uh, uh, below the horizon, it will stop, it stops guiding, and it's gonna send a pushover. It's gonna send over uh, to my smartphone that has completed the imaging sequence with this particular target. So if I was, if this, if I had done one night of this and I come back the second night, what I would change is instead of slew, center, and rotate, I would just slew, I would change this command to slew and center. And then instead of set variable to rotate one, up here in the top where I've got variable one initially set at zero, I would set it to whatever angle that it rotated to the night before. So if it rotated to 123.4 degrees, I would do I would change this to 123.4. And then down here, I would change this set variable to rotate by mechanical uh, angle. So if I come down here to rotate in my instructions, uh, rotator, rotator, power up, let's see. is rotate by mechanical angle. Rotate my mechanical angle plus, because this is the one that allows me to use that variable. So I can come in here and change this and say by angle, and I would change this to rotate one. And it would pull this variable amount from what I set up at the very top, and it would rotate back to that exact same angle again, and then continue on. So again, I would change this to just slew and center instead of rotating and then I would change it to rotate back to the mechanical angle that uh, I had the night before. But I'll go ahead and delete that. Okay, so there's my first target. So for my second target, um, if I was going to do a second target, I could, I would just go back into the, uh, the Sky Atlas, find the target, set it for framing, 
and then pick the appropriate template and drop it in. At the end here, we'll go back to the templates, my basic sequence end, I'll drag that in, nope, wrong one, my advanced sequence end, that's the one that I use, drop it in. So what it does is then it will park the scope, it will send me a message saying that it parked the scope, and then I, it, it tells me that it's copying my data up to my NAS. So it actually copies all of my data from the night before or, uh, up to my NAS so that I have access to it to do processing the next day. It's also a good way to have a backup in case something catastrophic happens. And this is done with a little external script. This is just a batch file that runs a robocopy command that copies everything from the mini computer in the observatory up to the NAS in, the, in my house. When that finishes, it tells me it completed that. I close the roof. I tell, I send the push over. I tell my phone that I close the roof. I close the flat panel. I warm the camera. And when that's all done, it sends me a message saying that the session is complete. So that would be a typical, uh, a typical image for RGB. I'm gonna go up and I'm going to, oops. I'm going to go up and I'm going to delete that. Delete that. Delete that. All right. Uh, let's see what we would do if we were doing a, um, a narrowband image. So let's say I see uh, 443. So that's the Jellyfish Nebula. So we'll set that for Framing Assistant. Let it load that in. And as you can see here, this object doesn't rise until about midnight. So this would be a good image to pair with the one that I just showed you. We can set up the helix. It runs from dusk until about midnight. And then at midnight, it can pick up this image and it would go, uh, this target, and it would go until dawn. So let's frame this a little differently. Let's do something like, say that. Now, since this is a narrow band image, I want to shoot stars. I want to shoot RGB stars. So I'm going to go to the sequencer. Add sequence, and we're going to do uh, mono RGB stars offsets rotate. So once again, it looks very, very similar to before. Here's the target, meridian flip, center after drift, restore guiding, wait until dusk, wait until it's above the horizon. Tell me that it's going to start shooting stars. Switch to loom, slew center and rotate, set my rotate variable to the, whatever the rotator position is, start guiding, run an autofocus, and that doesn't need to be there. I'll delete that. Uh, and set an auto, run the autofocus. Again, we're going to have a trigger set up that if my HFR changes, it'll refocus. Um, loop while it's above the horizon. We're only going to loop for 10 iterations because we're taking stars. We're taking three each at 30 seconds apiece of red, green, and blue. And then we dither. So it's going to run through 10 iterations, three each, 30 seconds apiece. It's going to stop guiding and it's going to tell me that it completed taking stars. So we're done with that. Okay, now I want to actually shoot the target. So let's go back to the framing wizard and we want to add target to sequence. Same target, I haven't changed anything. Everything's the same, except now we're going to take and we're going to shoot uh, SHO offsets. Notice I'm not doing rotate here. So we pick that. It will add that into the sequence down here. Now it's just the the sequence, the same target, all the same attributes here and triggers at the top. 
Um, in this particular case, uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn off the autofocus. We should be in focus. We just finished taking stars, so there's no reason to waste time taking stars. But notice we slew in center and we rotate by angle of rotate one. Rotate one was set up here when we did the stars. So the nice part about this is it's not gonna actually rotate anything. But if I decide I wanna shoot this a second night, I would delete or disable the section here that's doing stars. And then I would set up here in the top, which I haven't pulled in yet, but we would do that. We'll do the sequence start. So if this was the second night, I would delete the stars and I would change this rotate one variable to whatever the angle was that I rotated the night before. So in that case, when if this part wasn't here, it drops down to the shoot, the actual target here in SHO, it's gonna slew center and it's gonna to rotate to that same angle that it did the night before, exactly the same angle. So my flats and so forth are going to be just fine. Okay, basically the same type of thing. Uh, after my HFR changes, 10%, it needs to do an autofocus. Uh, it's gonna loop until Donical Dawn or until it sets, whichever first. And I'm taking one each of of SHO and then I dither. These are five minute subs. So the reason I like doing this and the reason I like doing the filter offsets, like if I wasn't doing filter offsets and I didn't want to have to do all this auto focusing every single image in this particular case, let's say I was going to shoot all night tonight in, in Sulfur 2. Well, that's fine, but what if it's a week of bad weather after that, I wouldn't have anything but just sulfur data. This way, no matter what, I've got some of everything and I'm not wasting a lot of time doing autofocuses because when it moves, it's gonna autofocus on luminosity, on the, on the luminance uh, filter when it does the autofocus. Then it's gonna to switch to S2 and it knows how many focus steps S2 is to be in focus from whatever focus is for luminosity. Then it's gonna to switch to HA and it knows how many focus steps to move. And it's gonna to switch to O3 and it knows how many focus steps to move. So it simply moves the focuser. It does not have to move, run an autofocus. So if we come over here in options, I'll show you that real quick. And we go to autofocus. <clears throat> you can see that at luminance, the offset is zero. It takes a five second exposure and that's my autofocus filter. So it knows to always go when it's doing an autofocus to switch to luminance. But red is two clicks negative from luminance. Green is seven clicks positive from luminance. Blue is 31 clicks positive from luminance. Sulfur is two negative from luminance. HA is 13 negative from luminance and O3 is 11 positive from luminance. If it was actually going to run an autofocus, let's say on S2, those are 20 second exposures instead of five second exposures. So you're wasting a lot of time doing autofocus. By setting up the autofocus filter offsets and using those, then it will actually just move the, that amount for each item. We'll go back here when we're done. Um, we'll do the advanced end. Now, let's say that I want to take flats at this point. So here's my end. We saw this earlier. Parks the scope, tells me it parked, uh, copies my data up, closes the roof, uh, tells me it closed the roof, closes the flat panel, warms the camera, and then tells me everything's done. But let's say that I want to take um, flats for my uh, for my SHO or for my I've taken stars so let's say I was going to take flats for my stars as well so I have trained flat LRGB 
I'm gonna drag that down before I warm the camera because I want my camera to still be cooled. So I'm gonna drop that in here. And here it's going to tell me it's gonna start taking flats. It's gonna rotate by rotate one, which is the right angle. In this case, it's not gonna move anything, but we know that. And then I wanna take 30 luminance, red, green, and blue. Now, in this particular case, I don't need to take luminance because I didn't take any luminance. Uh, so I'll just delete that one. It tells me it's finished taking the LRGB flats. So now I need to take my SHO flats. So we'll drag train SHO. We'll drag it in right below. Okay. And now it's going to, once again, tell me it's taking SHO flats. It's going to rotate by that variable, rotate one. I'm going to take 30 of SHO, and it's going to tell me it's complete. Now, the only problem here is, is way up here is when I copied my data. My flats haven't been copied. So let's do that. Let's pull the data transfer. We'll pull it right below the flats. And all that is is that same, exact same message we had up here. It tells me it's copying the data. It runs the little batch file that copies those files up as well. So now all of my flats and all of my star data and my narrowband data has been pulled up. I warm the camera and it tells me I'm done. So this would be a typical imaging sequence um, that would take stars and narrowband data. Now, the next night, I would, and I would save this. If I want to shoot again tomorrow night, I don't need to take the star data again, so I would delete the section on taking the stars. So I come up here to this whole target, and I would just delete this one. And then there was no reason for it to take the, the, the stars again, and I wouldn't need to take flats again because nothing has changed since the night before. So hopefully this helps a little bit, kind of gives you an idea. Um, again, I will make all of these templates available. Uh, there'll be a link down below, and you can pull those down. Feel free to modify them any way you wish. I want to go back and give credit uh, back to Chad in the beginning. Uh, that's where I got my original templates, and then I have modified them for my own use. Uh, and hopefully you can do the same. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you like this information uh, and want to see more in the future. I would certainly appreciate it. And until next time, clear skies, and thanks for watching.